Welcome to this video on conditional probability. Conditional probability is the probability an event will occur given that an event has already occurred. There are two types of conditional probability events. The first one is independent events, and that is when the two events do not affect each other. So whatever has already happened doesn't matter. It's not going to affect the new probability. And that's usually coins and dice, just like with compound probability. It's not only coins and dice, but those are two that are definitely going to be independent. So the formula for independent conditional probability is the probability of A, this symbol reads given. So the probability of A given B, so given that B has already happened, is just the probability of A because what already happened doesn't matter. It's not going to affect A. And it's the same if you flip it, the probability of B given A. So A has already happened, but it doesn't matter. It's not going to affect B. It's just the probability of B. Dependent is when the event that has already occurred is going to affect the new event. The formula for that is the probability of A given B is the probability of the intersection of A and B divided by the probability of B. And then if you switch, the only thing that changes is whatever is given is in the denominator. So if it's B given A, then the probability of A is in the denominator. All right, so let's try some independent examples first. So what is the probability of a red cube and a white cube numbered 1 through 6, both landing on 3, if you know that the white cube landed on 3? So a cube is like a, a die, so they're not going to affect each other. It doesn't matter that the white cube has already landed on 3. These events are independent, so what's already happened doesn't matter. So basically, we're just finding the probability of the white cube landing on 3. And that would be 1 out of 6 because there's 1, 3 out of 6 total. Number 2, what is the probability of both cubes landing on odd numbers if you know that the white cube landed on a 3? So again, it doesn't matter that the white cube has landed on a 3. That's not going to affect the red cube. So let's think about odd numbers on a red cube or any cube. There are three of them out of six, or one half. Number three, what is the probability of a penny, dime, and quarter all landing on tails if you know that the quarter and penny landed on tails? All right, so we've already tossed the quarter and the penny, but those are not going to affect the dime. These are independent events. It doesn't matter what's already happened, so the probability of the down, that's all we have left, landing on tails, is one half. And then number four, what is the probability of all three coins landing on tails if all you know is that the quarter landed on tails? Now this one is a little bit different because we're talking about we need two things to happen, not just one. So we do know that one has already landed on tails, but that doesn't matter. So we're not worried about the quarter, but we are worried about the penny and the dime. So we want the penny to land on tails and 
the dime to land on tails. So we want both. This is an and problem. That's why we're multiplying. So that probability would be one fourth. So that's an example of conditional and compound probability together in one problem. All right, let's look at some dependent examples. So here we have a two-way frequency table. And it says, students responding to a poll were asked where the, whether they were for, against, or had no opinion about a proposal to increase funding for the school's football program. And number five says, what is the probability that a randomly selected student would be for the proposal given that that student was a girl? So I know it's conditional probability because I see that word given. And if I scroll back up here, the formula for dependent events, and these are not coins or dice, so they're dependent. On top in the numerator, we put the intersection of A and B. And then in the denominator, we put what was given. So if it's A given B, then the probability of B goes on the bottom in the denominator. All right, so let's go back down. So let's start with what was given. It's given that this student was a girl. So that goes in my denominator because that is a condition for this problem. We know it's a girl. So look at how many girls there are total. There are 45. So we are only concerned about the girls in this problem. So out of those girls, how many are for the proposal? Well, there are 10. And that's where the intersection comes in. This is the intersection of girls and for the proposal. So 10 out of 45. Let's reduce that. Two ninths. All right, next one. What is the probability that a randomly selected student will be a boy given that the student was for the proposal? So the condition here is that they are for the proposal. We're only worried about this column. So total is 50. Out of those 50, how many are boys? That would be 40 or four fifths. Pause the video now and try seven by yourself. Okay, so number seven, it's given that the student was a boy, so we're only worried about the boys. And out of those boys, the ones that have no opinion, there are 10 of them, which reduces to 2 elevenths. All right, last example. The Venn diagram to the right shows A, 10th graders, and B, the number of high school students that have a computer. We want to find the probability of A given B. So it's given that they are 10th graders, so let's find the number of 10th graders. That would be all the people in circle B, so 60. And then out of those 60, how many have a computer? Well, that would be the ones that overlap with circle A because circle A is having a computer, so that would be 15. So 15 out of 60. Or one fourth. Number nine says explain what the probability of A given B represents in the context of this problem. So that would be the probability of all 10th graders who have a computer. Or the probability of being a 10th grader given you have a computer. All right, and then the last one, the probability of B given A so it's given that they are in set A. It's given that they have a computer at home. So the number of students that have a computer are 35. And then out of those 35, how many are 10th graders? So that would be 15. So 15 out of 35. Or 3 sevenths. All right, stop the video now and complete the practice and check it with your teacher.